What's going on, you cracking humans? From an Englishman in Nagoya, Japan, representing first over everything, welcome to the Cycling Maven YouTube channel. Good morning, you cracking humans. So today I'm walking Hannah to work and I think you might be able to tell why. I'll let you explain, Hannah. So there's a crazy lady on the loose and she's um, had a go at me twice now. She pinched me the other morning and she yeah, ran you told, and, and you told yeah, them. yeah, so um, they know. They I've got my escort, my bodyguard. Let's go. So I've, for, yeah, I've got out of bed and I'm walking her down. Let's go. Alright, let's do this. I really, really hope she attacks us. It'll make a sick intro for the vlog today. <laughs> Hannah goes, that's her! Then looks down the road. It's a rubbish bin. I can't see because I don't have my glasses on. Is that her? No, it's a rubbish bin, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see because I haven't got my glasses on. That is so funny. You thought that was her, but it's actually a rubbish bin. Up here is the higher risk area. Is it? Well, back there was where she attacked me, but this is uh, over here is where she was sitting on the man, Katie said. <laughs> <So. laughs> she was sitting on a man. Yeah. Thanks, mate. All right, you made it. Yay, love you, thank you. Awesome. All right, have a nice day. See ya. So I just sent Hannah through a couple of logo ideas, you know, like my logo is sort of, it's got the C and the W, so we're sort of toying with changing it. But uh, I just sent her through a couple of ideas. This is the email she sent back to me. All right, so I've actually got to do some work today. I'm taking some stuff into a hospital. I'm running around to a couple of hospitals, but today is the step test day. So I'm heading, I've got my bike in the back of the car, and I'm heading over to Stephen Lane's house to do the step test in about two hours. So the surgeon I'm meeting up with now is Matt Reed. He's a very uh, well-respected young surgeon, uh, up-and-coming surgeon. He did uh, cancer research last for the last couple of years at Peter McCallum Cancer Centre here in Melbourne. Matt is a very smart young guy, uh, and you know it's it's sort of close to home to me because very recently, as we know here in Australia, uh, Mark Gunter, who was a very very well-known cycling photographer worldwide, but an all-round awesome guy, uh, passed away of complications from esophageal cancer. Uh, he left behind uh, a wife, Leanne, who's a, who's a lovely lady, and I met her at the Tour de France this year, and, and their son, Lucas, who was one year old at the time of Mark's death. Uh, when Mark was diagnosed with uh, esophageal cancer, he, it, it happened very quickly, it progressed very quickly from there, and from what I do in my work, I know that Esophageal cancer is very aggressive. So we're gonna meet up with a guy who knows a lot about it. I'm just walking over to get some food with uh, Matt Reed, who's uh, one of the he's one of the surgeons here. He's been doing this for like 15 years. So what what research did you do? Because we caught up with the Tour de Cure crew yesterday. Yep. And so you did esophageal cancer research? Yeah, that was my I did a PhD on esophageal cancer, so basically I developed models to be able to grow cancer tissue in normal human esophagus in the lab. Yeah. So it just helps us to work out how the cancer grows, investigate tumour biology, and also to test new drugs. So I'm currently collaborating with a group in Amsterdam. We're developing a new drug for um, esophageal cancer, pancreatic cancer, and colorectal cancer. So they're using the models and cell lines I've developed to test their drug. Amazing. So, yeah. So it was really, it was worth it. It was well worth it. It was well worth it. And it just helps in, in terms of getting jobs as well. 
Yes. You know, I want to do upper GI surgery. I operate on an esophagus and stomach. Yep. And it's pretty competitive to get it. So they interviewed 42 people this year, Australia and New Zealand wide, for seven positions, and I got one of those. So. That's pretty amazing. So esophageal cancer, is it is it an aggressive cancer? Is it very aggressive? So five, if you get diagnosed, five year survival rate for all comers would be less than 15%. So most people are dead by the time they hit you know, five years from home, post diagnosis. Wow. So 95%. Well, 85% will be dead. 85. So very aggressive and very few treatments that are effective for it. So. Well, basically, there's two main types of esophageal cancer. There's squamous cell carcinoma. The main risk factors for that are smoking and alcohol. Yeah. And there's adenocarcinoma, which is the cancer I've been working on. And the main risk for that is obesity and reflux. So they've seen the trend in increasing obesity has sort of mirrored the trend in increasing esophageal cancer. Because it's the reflux that causes inflammation in the esophagus. And that's a well-known fact that inflammation leads to cancer. So. Is that right? Yeah. So, so obviously, uh, obesity is the number one cause, is it? Yeah, obesity increases your intra-abdominal pressure, yeah. and uh, basically that pressure overcomes the lower esophageal sphincter mechanism. So all that bile and gastric acid refluxes into the lower esophagus, yeah. gives you, causes the inflammation. Yeah. For in terms of colorectal cancer, if you red meat, people that have a lot of red meat, especially like barbecued, sort of very burnt charcoal. There's a lot of carcinogens in the charcoal, yep. so that's a risk factor. And in the Asian countries, preserved foods as well um, lead tofu. to a lot. Of, not, not probably not so much tofu, but um, well, probably more the Japanese type foods as well. Yeah. That that can lead to SCCs with all the preservatives they use and the way they fix their foods. So you're telling me you got a KOM this morning, or a trophy? Well, not a number one, a number seven. You got a number seven. Yeah, I've got two number ones, but yeah. I think they've probably been taken from me now. But I've got a seven coming to work this morning. Where was this at? Was it up some obscure hill? Pretty obscure. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you get KOMs? Yeah, well that's true. You've got to chase the obscure ones. Guys right. like you and I have to chase the obscure ones. Yeah, exactly. But no, I think I was seven of a hundred or something. So. Good job. Although you did say, the last KOM I actually got, like a, a legit number one out of 600, you said you were going to take it off me. So. Yeah, well, I'm going to chuck that down. <laughs> this is one of those rare occasions where the surgeon is buying me lunch. That's how it is. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate that. Yeah, oh, he's claiming the receipt with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to claim that on tax. <laughs> Alright, see you later. So explain to the overseas viewers what this is. Aussie rules football. Aussie rules footy. Sort of like... It's like rugby and Gaelic football all combined. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, if you're not Australian, it's, it's, it looks like an odd game, but it's actually quite a, quite a good game, a isn't it? There's only a couple of I used to play for Wanderers in Darwin. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to play in TFL many years ago. All right, through the yellow, yellow posts. Out on the pool, I think. Got it. Oh, that's Let's do this. I gotta get going. We're not doctors, we're smooth operators. 20 years. From starting uni to finish training, 20 years. You're kidding, and how long have you been going now? 18. Mate, that's amazing. Mate, seriously, who would want to study for 18 years? These guys, it's a wrong. Still got two to go, <laughs> 20 years. All right, so I've just arrived at Stephen Lane's house for this step test, this, the, the ominous step test. But he's just reassured me that I'm gonna be okay and it's just two minutes of pain. Is that right? Uh, everyone enjoys it, mate. I don't know what you're scared of. <laughs> you're just scared of the num he's just scared of the numbers, that is it. He's gonna get some numbers and he's not gonna wanna tell everyone, but he'll be fine. I am not going to wanna tell you how low my numbers are, but I'm going to. See the money sliding across under here now. We're going to bump it up 20%. <laughs> no, I said 40. 40%. Yeah, it's what do you think of CrossFit for cycling? 
I don't think of CrossFit for cycling. You don't? No. I know you're a CrossFitter, an ex-CrossFitter. Yeah. 